All right, hey everybody, welcome to our first lesson of this geometry school year. Um, this first lesson is uh, from section one, two out of our textbook. We're going to break this into two parts uh, because I'm adding some stuff that's not in our textbook with this. Um, but uh, hey, before we get going, I, I do want to, well, just point out that yes, there's this amazing sunset going on behind me, and I hope that inspires you. I certainly hope that it doesn't um, distract you from. From learning this. Um, be inspired. Um, all right, let's get to this. Uh, this the lesson is all about the definition of the most basic building blocks that, of geometry, points, lines, and planes. So we need to understand these definitions pretty well. A point is a location. A point um, has no length, no width, nor thickness. Okay? So a point is, is simply a place. We represent a point. You've seen these in algebra, I'm sure, by a dot, or what we call a, a point. Um, a point is named by a capital letter. So these are the things that, that make a point. Um, here are some points. There's point A, point B, point C. Um, if I didn't have those letters, we wouldn't be able to, uh, to say where we are specifically. Like, you wouldn't say, hey, let's meet at this place right? You have to, you give a specific location. Let's meet at the Chick-fil-A, whatever. Um, which one? On Franklin Road. Okay. So you have to be more specific and we give them names so that we can locate them uh, specifically. All geometric figures consist of or are made of points. So the very foundational, most important building block of everything we're going to do are points, or is points. You get my point. Anyway, um, a line, um, it's something you're familiar with, I hope, but it's an infinite set of points that extends in two directions, to, in two opposite directions. That adjective is important. A line has length, but it has no width and thickness, and we'll talk a lot more about this length and width and thickness uh, in class, but, but that is the definition of a line. Um, it is represented by well, what we call a line, but we'll talk about why what we call a line is not really a line. But you draw a line in quotes and put arrows on either end. That is that that is now a line. Now, if we're going to talk about a specific line, we've got to be able to name it somehow. Well, there's two ways that we can do that. We either use points. How many points must you have? Um, well, the answer to that question is two. If as long as you have two points on that line, um, if I name these two points here, uh, point A and point B. I can uh, name this line here line AB, and you'd write those points, those letters, capital A, capital B, with the, a line over it with arrows. That's line AB. Um, or um, a line can simply have a lowercase letter kind of attached to it next to it that we'll call this line K. Um, we will see a lot more of this as time goes on. Okay, so those are points, and then those are lines. Um, a plane is an infinite set of points that create a flat surface that extends without ending. Lines extend without ending. Planes do as well, but they're flat surfaces. Um, you know, like a piece of paper, like a desk, like a wall. Um, there's tons of examples around you. Um, a plane has length and width, but no thickness. Let's do a quick compare and contrast. A point has no length, width, or thickness. A line has length, but no width or thickness. A plane has length and width, but no thickness. So we keep on adding pieces and parts to this. We will represent a line by a parallelogram or a quadrilateral. A, a piece of paper is a quadrilateral, a parallelogram. Um, a, most four-sided room walls are quadrilaterals, parallelograms. So that's usually how we'll do it. Um, there will be some exceptions where we'll use triangles as well. But generally speaking, we'll use four letters. And we can name it two ways. We'll use three to four of those letters. This is plain T D E F G, um, because those points were named D E F G. Or it can have a capital letter, kind of like a point is named. A plane can be named. It'll usually be in the corner of your plane like that. All right. So there's one other thing that we need to define. Um, the thing, none of these things have had thickness, right? Length. We got length and width covered. But what has all of those things? Well, space. Space is the set of all points. Um, we're, we're most commonly, um, I, I think you'll understand this, 3D. Um, 
when we talk about three dimensions, um, we're talking about space. You take up space, not just a flat space, but a full space. That's 3D. Uh, when we're talking about planes, that's two dimensions. 2D, the line is one-dimensional, 1D, and uh, points have no dimensions at all. Okay? Now, I'd, what I'd like for you to do on the bottom part of this page is I want you to just take a few minutes and these terms, points, lines, and planes, should have some familiarity meaning with you. Okay? Um, so pause the video um, and answer these questions from your, your past. Just do the best you can. Make sure you pause the video, seriously, and do this. And like, if you haven't already, now. Okay, we'll talk about these answers that you wrote here in, in class, but um, yeah, let's flip the page. All right, um, if you're paying attention right now, up um, just underneath where it says one, two concept guide, right? What's the point? Uh, that, was a, that was a good line, it's plain and simple. But right, what's the point underneath the one, two concept guide? All right, to the right, um, this, the rest of this page is not in your textbook, but I want to connect what you've done in uh, your previous math lives to, to this. To the right is a coordinate plane, okay? Um, a coordinate plane um, is a flat surface. Do you see this? It's got, um, well, yeah, it's a flat surface like this, a coordinate plane. The plane is based on two perpendicular lines. The x-axis, which is on here, the x-axis. You know it's the x-axis because it's labeled with an x, and the y-axis, which I've highlighted here in green, and you'll know it's the y-axis because it has a y next to it. Um, Okay, locations for points are created by ordered pairs in the form of X and Y, and my hope is that none of this is brand new to you. If it is, come see me and I'll, I'll catch you up. But X and Y, the first letter will, uh, the first number in an ordered pair will always be the X value, where it fits on this number line, and then the second number will be um, the Y coordinate, where it fits on the Y number line, okay? Always X and then Y, always alphabetical order. Um, when we're talking number, these are really two numbers on two number line that are stacked together, an X number line and a Y number line. Uh, this is zero to the positive, uh, positive is to the right, negative is to the left, and for the Y axis, up is positive and down is negative. Okay, I hope that's kind of intuitive. The two axes divide the coordinate planes into four quadrants. I hope you remember that. There's four quadrants. It starts up here in the top right, and then goes counterclockwise. We got. Quadrant 1, Quadrant 2, Quadrant 3, and Quadrant 4. The point where the axes intersect, intersect's a word we'll talk a lot in our next lesson, but um, it's they intersect here. That's called the origin. Its ordered pair is 0, 0, and many graphs will have a, um, you'll notice the origin, they'll put an O right in the kind of the corner next to the, uh, next to the origin that you'll know this particular coordinate plane did not, but ones that you'll see later will. So here's what I'd, uh, well, we're going to plot points. See if you can plot point A right here, um, on here, and name the quadrant. Uh, well, I've already done it, never mind. Um, quad point A, I'm going to go 5 to the right, because the, it's, um, the x coordinate is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then up 3. There is point A. What quadrant is it in? Quadrant 1. Okay, uh, go ahead and see if you can do um, points B, C, D, and E. Plot them over here, and we'll check your work here in a second. Pause the video. Okay, um, there's point B. That's in quadrant 3. Point C is over here. That's in quadrant 4. Um, D is down here. It is not in a quadrant. The points that are on the axes are technically not in a quadrant at all. And then point E is over here, that's in quadrant two. Um, if that's, if you need some help with that, please let me help you. It won't take us long to fix, I'm sure. All right, um, next and really the last part of this is we want to, um, we'll talk about, well, we'll just, let's just continue. <laughs> um, plot these two points. N is at point two, three. Um, M is at the coordinate negative three, four. If we connect the two points, we form a line 
segment. We'll talk a lot more about this in the days to come, but this is a line segment. It is not a line. It's part of a line. It ends, we, and we would name it like this, okay? It ends. It doesn't go on forever. It doesn't have the arrows. So it becomes a line when we add the arrows to the ends of it like that, okay? Um, all right, so this is a line. Now, points and lines are connected. I hope that you're seeing this and remembering this. Um, and then there's another term that I want us to remember. It's called slope. Do you remember this term? What is the formula for slope? If you don't remember, it's this. The formula for slope, the letter we use is M. It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, which one of these points you call x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, it doesn't really matter as long as whichever, well, this is going to be the 1 and the 1, and this is going to be the 2 and the 2, or vice versa. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's the change in y over the change in x, the rise over the run. What is the slope of this line? There's two ways you can calculate it. Um, I'm trying to use colors here to help you remember, if I use n as the first set of coordinates and m as the second, or second and first, whichever, um, it's got to be 3, y2, minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That would get me negative 1 over 5. If you flip it around, if you put the, this coordinate first, uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, um, you get the same value. It's just going to have the positive or the negative on the opposite ends. But either way, the slope of line in M is negative 1 fifth. Okay. That's a review of some important algebra things. Oh, once we, if you have a coordinate plane, you can just count. It goes up 1 to the left 5. Up is positive, left is negative, that's negative 1 fifth. Or we could go down 1 and to the right 5. Down is negative, to um, right is positive. You can find your slope with the coordinate plane that way. So what I'd like for you to do, pause the video one last time, find the, the uh, well, plot the points, find the coordinates and the slope of the line that contains these two points for these three. We'll talk answers in just a second. You should have paused the video before I display the answers. That's how this is going to work. Um, here's what I got. Um, hopefully you have similar answers. If you don't, see if you can figure out what you did wrong. Maybe I did something wrong. Um, on number three, we'll talk about the slope in class. Okay? Um, all right. Get some rest. we got a bit huge year in front of us. See you. Bye.